Okay, let's look at example 6, 7, 8, and 9. We'll look at that. And we're going to look at the multiplication rule, a more traditional set um, formula based off of the conditional probability. And so in this case, the keyword is and again. What's the probability of A and B happening? And so we're looking at that there. You can see the formula for it. What's the probability of A and B happening? Is the probability of A times the probability of B given that A already happened? And again, you'll see this formula comes from the one that we've seen in the previous video here. It's a little algebra gets you, but it's the same exact formula, just solved algebraically for the other, for the and part or the intersection. Uh, something we need to know is um, this definition of independent. Two events are independent, right, where one doesn't influence the other one, right? If if we have uh, two events that are independent, then we have this multiplication rule right here. We can just say probability of A times the probability of B because this, again, since they're independent, remember from that previous uh, video, we have that. And so just looking at these problems here, what's the probability of drawing a red ball first, then a second? Um, this is, again, a sequence of events. First, a red, second, blue. It's the probability of first times the probability of the second, given that the first already occurred. And so it's 3 out of 7 times 4 out of 6, and you get your 2 out of 7 when you multiply across. 3, four, three times 4, 7 times 6. Right? There is a condition, right? In terms of after you choose the first ball, you only have 6 balls left, and 4 of them are blue, so 4 out of 6. What is the probability of drawing a red and another red? 3 out of 7 times 2 out of 6, and so you have that. Again, it goes from 7 to 6 because you've drawn the first ball, right? And the second drawing depends upon what happened on the first drawing, and so that's why you have this adjustment there. Again, looking at example 7 and 8, probability of first times the probability of the second, First is red, and the second one's blue. You will see 3 out of 7 times 4 out of 7. In this case, we have something called with replacement. So you put the ball back in, and so that's what makes the events independent, and so you multiply. The key word here is with replacement. You replace the first ball, so your total is 7 still. And you'll see what is the probability of drawing a red, and then another red. you got 3 out of 7 times 3 out of 7, or 3 7 squared. Because, again, it's with replacement. Again, here's the key term with replacement. Draw three cards. So probably all three are hearts with replacement. So 13 out of 52 times 13 out of 52 times 13 out of 52. Or you can write a cubed, and you get 1 out of 64 when you simplify. Or you have this probability without replacement. Notice how this problem changes without replacement. Instead of 13 out of 52, it's 12 out of 51, 11 out of 50, and you get a different answer without replacement. Draw three cards without replacement. Was the probability the first two are kings, the last one is a queen. You will see the first two are kings, so 4 out of 52 times 3 out of 51. And the last one's a queen, four queens left out of 50. And so you can see very small probability if you choose three cards that the first two are kings and the last one is a queen. But it does happen, but even though it's a small probability. Let's take a look at uh, example nine. It would be a good one to practice. You may want to practice that before um, you take a look at the video. Okay, now that you had a chance to try to solve it, this is what we're trying to solve for. First case, if two of the thousand subjects are randomly selected, what's the probability they both had false positive? The first is false and the second. So here's your false positive right there. There's 90 out of the whole population. And so what's the probability that the first one is a false positive? That would be 90 out of um, 1,000 times the probability that the second one is a false positive given that the first was a false positive. So that's 89 out of 999. You would multiply that to get your answer. 
and you get 0 0.008. So it's unlike, is it likely that they that select two subjects? The answer is it's not likely. Right? It's unusual if that happened. And right and unusual occurs when the events are less than 5% chance. Here it's less than 1%, 0.8% chance. Find the probability that two randomly selected subjects both have a negative test result. And so looking at a negative test result, here it is right here. Negative test results are here. And so in this case, you would get uh, 866 over 1,000 times that. That's the probability the second one has a false negative test result, given that the first one did. That would be 865 over 1,000. And again, you're going to get, I think, a very small number. So we can do that calculation real quick. There we go. Divided by 1,000 squared. So you're going to end up with, um, let's see, seven, 0 0.7 or nine or about 74 percent chance that you would have that find the probability that a random sick person has given it uh, as a has a positive test given that they're not a drug user and so in this case we can use our graph our, our table to help us answer that the probability of positive test given that they're not a drug user and so what we're really caring about in this case is our new populations that give in, we know that they're not a drug user. So how many people are not a drug user? That would be 950 are not a drug user. And out of that, how many have a positive test that are um, out of not a drug user? There are 90. So the probability that someone has a positive test given they're not a drug user, which is called the false positive, would be in this case here 90 divided by 950 and so in this case here um, we know that it'd be 0 0.0947 or 9.47 9.5 percent